Many of you are starting to be aware of privacy issues, but want to venture into protecting your privacy in little steps, meaning you want to do it for free. Well, it is your lucky day because today I will give you 10 tips which will make a significant dent to your internet privacy and they are all free. Most of you will not be aware of the privacy benefits of some of these tips so I'll explain why each tip brings about some privacy protection. There are probably hundreds of little tips I can give, but we'll settle on 10, and these are not the obvious ones. Stay right there to learn. Here are the 10 tips to protect your privacy, starting with the first one. Number one, sell data or Starlink. First, you might say this is not free. Well, I'm not telling you to get Starlink. I'm just saying if you already have cell data or Starlink, you will have more privacy than if you use your own Wi-Fi and your home network. It's probably safe to say that the vast majority of people already have cell data. So why is using cell data or Starlink a privacy benefit? Well, this is easily proven. When you connect to any website, that website will track you via an IP address. And of course, that results in an immediate loss of privacy if that IP address is your home router. This ties your internet activity specifically to you. But nowadays, the internet can only route traffic to any website using an IP address protocol called IPv4. Cell carriers, cell carriers and Starlink all use IPv6. Just in technical terms, IPv6 allows these providers to route your traffic internally, but they cannot route these to the internet. To route your traffic to the internet, they have to set up routers that convert from IPv6 to IPv4. The result is that potentially thousands of users will share the same IPv4 address. Thus, it will not be possible for a destination website or a platform like Google or Facebook to figure out a unique IP address for you. Now, someone who works at the cell carrier or Starlink could still track your traffic in theory and see your traffic in IPv6. But this would require a subpoena from the government, so it is not a threat for normal people. So if you do not have a VPN, just be aware that cell data and Starlink are sufficient to protect you from being identified by a destination website. Number two, removing the SIM card. Now this tip is for specialized moments. If you're going to go to a protest, be aware that your phone will be tracked using something called an IMZ catcher or commonly known as Stingray. This device is often used by governments, but it can also be used by hackers and spy agencies. In fact, you can detect these devices when you drive by certain embassies. So in the past, if someone goes to a protest and the government flies a Stingray equipped drone, or if a plainclothes officer is walking around with a portable Stingray, the Stingray captures the IMZ the IMZ identifies the carrier and your specific account. So basically you are geofenced, meaning they have proof that you were nearby. Now the flaw with this Stingray method of surveillance is that it doesn't work when you remove the SIM card. So without the SIM card, your phone does not emit an IMZ. Although it is not feasible to remove the SIM card in all cases, if you know that you're going to go in an area that's sketchy, it's a good precaution to take off the SIM card. Now, a couple of points to consider here. Turning the phone off in itself is not sufficient. If you have an iPhone, that ducking device is tracking you even when off and Apple will geofence you as well. Also, this is why I hate the eSIM option because it removes the potential to defend yourself using SIM card removal. So just be aware of these two gotchas. Number three, browser isolation. This is a tip I've given often and it is actually pretty simple, but the privacy benefits are huge. We are tracked on the internet to an extreme degree from the Google ID 
when you log into Google to access your YouTube and Gmail, you are basically letting Google know every action you do on the internet. I explained this in other videos and it's due to the fact that most websites have a Google proxy built in through Google Analytics and Google Ads. This is code from Google inserted into practically every website. Thus Google can detect if you visited a particular website and even what you clicked on. This completely overrides any kind of encryption since it is running on the destination website itself. This allows Google to know everything you are doing and every behavior. The solution is simple. Have multiple browsers. Log into Google on only one browser. I recommend Chrome for that. Then do not, and I repeat this, do not go to any other website on Chrome other than a Google on site. So you can use Gmail, YouTube, and whatever Google Cloud services on Chrome only. Then use other browsers, let's say Brave, to go to other sites like Amazon or Microsoft or Yahoo and so on. What this does is to isolate the Google ID. The Google ID will not show up on your website traffic on the Brave browser as long as you haven't logged into Google on that browser. You can have several other browsers available like Safari, Firefox and so on. And then you can allocate your activities on each. For example, you could watch YouTube videos on Safari and hide it from Google as long as you never log into Google on that browser. This is very effective at shutting down a significant part of Google tracking. If you've logged into Google on the other browser, just clear cookies and history initially to start from scratch. Now, Google will still be tracking you on Chrome, but you should be aware of that and act accordingly. Be aware that someone is watching, but at least you know. Number four, do not use Google search. In general, you should be aware that all your searches are matched to your Google ID and Google makes a profile of what you believe. Then they alter the search results, among other things, to fit you or their purpose which can sometimes be to influence you politically. If you want to be immune from this, I recommend that you never use Google search on any browser. Now, there are a variety of alternate search engines available. Each have their own flaws and biases, and so nothing is perfect. However, it is safe to say that anything else is better than Google search. One of the best options is to use startpage.com. You can use their browser extension if you want to make it a default search engine on Chrome. Startpage is a search proxy. It uses Google search but hides your identity by redirecting the search to come from their server. So this is the best option. It uses the best search data but without an identity. Other options are DuckDuckGo, Bing, and Yandex. Number five, eliminate EXIF metadata. Just know this, each time you take a photo, your photo will insert metadata into the photo. The most dangerous thing it will enter is location data. So it is extremely important that you never enable location for the camera app. Never, ever. When you upload these photos to your social media, your location is passed along often with an accuracy of six feet. For existing photos, you may want to clean the EXIF EXIF metadata from the photos. There are many apps that can do this. But one that I offer is my BraxMe app. Just upload a photo and then re-download it. It will then strip off the metadata on the new version, which is what you can upload to social media. Number six, two-factor authentication. One of the biggest ways that apps and specifically Google will spy on you is via phones used for two-factor authentication. The absolute proper solution requires you to spend money on a de-Google phone. But we will not do that. We'll go a free way, which is a partial solution. However, it will offer good protection. Google will accept a standard Android phone as two-factor authentication, and the 2FA will be offered via the Google app. This means the phone can run over Wi-Fi with no SIM card. 
So have some old Android phone or old iPhone, even one on 3G since it will not use a SIM card. Then put the normal Google ID you use on a computer on it and register it as your 2FA device using Wi-Fi. Again, no need for a SIM card. Then turn that sucker off. So now you have a backup 2FA device that you will use during the rare moments when 2FA is required. However, it will not be tracking you when it's off. Do not use your regular phone as your 2FA device, at least for Google. You can use it as a 2FA device for other platforms, though I really would tell you to use a different phone number for that. But since this is for free solutions, I'll ignore that problem for now. Do not use the same Google ID on your regular phone if it is a standard phone. Create some new Google ID if you have to. This will separate your phone from your other internet activities. This is not a perfect solution, but it makes a big dent. Number seven, use encrypted messaging apps. Just be aware that whenever you use SMS, not only does your carrier store those messages, they are captured by various law enforcement and three-letter agencies. For example, every record of every text and phone call is kept in the FBI DCIS database. To get around this, just start using encrypted messaging apps. Not all messaging apps are safe. For family use, Signal is definitely the most user-friendly, though I would not use it to communicate with strangers since it requires that you reveal a phone number. My absolute favorite encrypted messaging app is called Session. I made a video about it. If you understand the architecture of Session, you will see that this is the absolute best at eliminating any trace of metadata. Meaning it is good at obfuscating that particular people are even conversing. So this is at the top of my list right now. Number eight, using email in a secret way. Email, unfortunately, is such a bad way of communicating because whenever you send email, it creates metadata that connects the people who are communicating. Also, email has no encryption whatsoever, so it's basically like openly sending postcards over the internet. Now, government agencies know this, so sophisticated surveillance occurs to capture all this traffic and is associated with IP addresses, email addresses, and this turns into something called a relationship map which is used to connect people to each other. Well, back in 2016, General Petraeus and Paula Broadwell were trying to hide an affair and they came up with an ingenious scheme to hide in plain sight. What they did was to create a single anonymous email account. This account never sent external mail. Both Petraeus and Broadwell will go log into this particular email account and they would leave messages for each other in drafts. So let me explain the benefits of what they were doing. First, the email never gets sent over the internet in SMTP format, which is readable to the public. Practically all modern email servers use TLS encryption between the server and your computer, so interception will not be an issue. Now, keeping the email in drafts may expose the messages themselves to the email provider if they know to look for it. However, the main secret here is that there's no identity. As long as they don't exchange real name information in the messages or other identifiers, then even if someone intercepted the messages at the server end, they would be meaningless. In this case with Petraeus and Broadwell, they would be love notes between unknown people. This really highlights a big point in privacy, which is that often all you have to do is hide your identity and your privacy becomes safe. Number nine, free VPN alternatives. At the beginning of the video, I told you of a solution that would hide your IP address and that was to use cell data or Starlink. But this approach, though good for average everyday internet activity, may not be secure enough. In the end, a VPN is still better, lots better. However, it is not free. For a more secure solution, you need to utilize the dark net or something called onion routing. There are two free solutions to accomplish this. One is to use a Tor browser and the other is to install LokiNet. 
both solutions are free. LokiNet is the better solution. For one, it is much faster and LokiNet is able to hide your IP address in all your traffic from DNS, email, to web browsing. A Tor browser is limited to hiding web traffic. I did a recent video on the darknet so you can watch that. The disadvantage of Tor is that it is very slow. LokiNet is faster. Yes, a VPN is a much faster option, but today we're only examining the free options. Number 10, sharing files safely. This is a frequent problem in modern times and is likely the largest source of privacy and security issues. I will offer a solution that's similar to the email sharing I mentioned earlier. What you would do is set up a single account on a site that allows file sharing and preferably some sort of encryption. This is not that simple anymore because a site like Dropbox would require two-factor authentication and certainly a Google ID for Google Drive which defeats the purpose. For casual use, you can use my own app, Braxme. Braxme will not ask for 2FA or any other identification. Set up a single account on Braxme. This way both parties know the username and password. Then all you do is use the feature on Braxme called My Files, which is on the main menu. Then you can upload files and both parties can see the files on there. And both can download as needed. The advantage here is that you don't have to teach the other party how to use the app since they just go to one spot, My Files and they don't have to sign up, so that removes another friction step. And they remain logged in until cookies are cleared. This is great for passing files that have personally identifiable information, like tax returns and so on. After you download, you can immediately delete the file, so there is not even a need to preserve it on the site. Now, Braxby does encrypt the files on the server, but delete them afterwards and you will not exceed Braxme's storage limitation of four gigabytes. All free. Braxme does have a file size limit for uploading, which is also four gigabytes, but this is good for normal documents. That's it folks, 10 simple tips, all free. This will have a significant effect on preserving your privacy if you implemented all of this while using something existing and not spending any more money. Folks, I have privacy products that protect your data so it will not be exposed to any rogue app. We have a Brax2 privacy phone running an open source Brax OS that makes your phone invisible. We also do flashing services to the Google other phone models on our store as well as stocking pre-flashed pixels. We have a VPN service, Bytes VPN, which has features like Tor routing, DNS obfuscation, and ad blocking. We have Braxmail, which is a metadata free way of doing email where no one knows where the message originated from. These products are on my app, Braxme. Come visit us there. The link is in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have fun. Thank you.